We have 36 cards left. We get our King of the Cosmos here. That's really nice. Just a bunch more land. Oh, we got our end raise forerunner. That's game. Woo! Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Thanks for taking the time to watch Hello Good Game, the best Magic the Gathering Arena channel for beginners and free-to-play individuals alike. We're looking at a free-to-play decklist upgrade. If you've not checked out our beginner's handbook, I really recommend you start there. It's got a uh, plethora of resources for beginners and free-to-play individuals alike. Um, everything from farming guides, limited strategy guides, um, free-to-play decks with upgrade guides attached to them. So it's a really good uh, resource for you guys to pick up and take a look at. So check that out. This is the updated or upgraded version of Simic Mutate, which is one of the best free-to-play decks within Ikoria. So let's take a look at the deck list. We're going to get into the deck strategy, talk about how it operates, get into our gameplay footage for the day, have some laughs out on our misplays, and then come full circle with our closing thoughts and call to actions. Thanks again for your attention. Let's get right into it. Our deck has a companion. It's Umori the Collector. It's a four cost, four five. Companions state that you have to have a rule that your deck follows in order to use that card as the companion. In Umori's case, it is each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. In this case, that shared card type is creatures. It's a creature deck. As Umori the Collector enters the battlefield, choose a card type. That's going to be the creature type. And that spells you cast of the chosen card type cost one less to cast. So all of our creatures are going to be that much cheaper, right? So that's really, really cool. Starting off with our one drops, we have four copies of a Boreal Grazer, a 0-3 with Reach, and when it enters the battlefield, you get to play an additional land from your hand this turn, so that's a very, very nice way to ramp, right? Two land in one turn, plus a 0-3 with Reach? Yeah. Baby Godzilla, Ruin Reborn, old Poliwag uh, Symbiote for 1-3. Each creature you cast costs one less to cast if it has Mutate. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has Mutate, draw a card and then discard a card, so that's a nice little cycle engine for your deck. Three copies of Paradise Druid, a 2-1 with Hexproof as long as it's untapped, and then we can tap it to add one mana of any color. Four copies of Parcel Beast. This is our first four drop. It's a 2-4. Mutate costs for two, and then you can pay one, tap it, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it into the battlefield. If it's not a land card, put it into your hand instead. This is like a girl spiral on a stick that's reusable, right? That's really, really nice. Migratory Great Horn, a 3-4 with Mutate for three. Whenever this creature mutates, search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield, tapped and then shuffle your library we have three copies of uh whoa gem razor a four four with reach and trample mutate costs as three whenever this creature mutates destroy target artifact or enchantment and opponent controls moving on to our five drops we have auspicious hysterics now this guy is a house packing meat as you can see a six six mutate costs as six whenever this creature mutates exile cards from the top of your library until you exile x permanent cards where x is the number of times this creature has mutated put those permanent cards onto the battlefield whoa <laughs> that's not it though we also have aluna apex of wishes or Ghidorah, king of the cosmos a six six with flying and trample mutate for six Whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card. Put that card into the battlefield or into your hand. So that's a really nice way to ramp as well. Not quite as good, but when you combo them together, uh, it works great. This is all tied together with our nuke of the deck and raise four runners. An 8 cost 7-7 seven, seven, Vigilance Trample Haste. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2, and gain Vigilance and Trample until the end of turn. Oh my lord. These spells are accompanied by two Castle Vantresses. We can tap for five to scry two. That's really nice. Five Islands. Two Castle Garenbriggs. Again, tapping for five to add six mana. So you're getting one additional mana. That's all right. Uh, our Forest times 14 and our Breeding Pool times four, right? So a very Forest heavy deck, but there's a little bit of blue in there and uh, a Speckle of Red, which normally we're not casting this as the creature. Normally it's going to come out with our Sterix, right? Or we mutate it, in which case we can just uh, use the split mana cost on his mutate as green. But we also have the Paradise Druid if you want to sneak it in uh, old school with the red mana source or the mountain. So that's the deck list. Let's talk about the strategy. The strategy really doesn't differ that much from the original free-to-play version. 
uh, you really want to mutate onto your Paradise Druid because it has Hexproof and then don't tap your Paradise Druid. Just keep mutating onto it just so they can't target it. They need to 100% have a field wipe to deal with it. If not, GG's. And then just build your field with your Druid and make sure to not leave your Druid um, tapped so it has Hexproof all the time. That's the biggest thing. Um, obviously, primarily you want to ramp first, which the Paradise Druid is part of. So we're talking a Boreal Grazer playing your lands. You can play uh, a Forest and then your Grazer and then a Castle Ventures, for example, like a thing that would come and tapped normally. Godzilla helps us ramp. Paradise Druid helps us ramp. Uh, so that's really nice. Migratory Great Horn is another really good ramp engine. Parcel Beast can also help us ramp a little bit. And then the rest of it, you just slash down, like I said, with Auspicious Sterex on your Druid. Uh, we have our Gem Razor if you need to remove enchantments or just trigger your Auspicious Sterex Mutate uh, trigger again. Uh, the same goes as your King of the Cosmos. And then ideally, when you're mutating your Sterex with things like your Parcel Beast that only cost two, you're going to eventually pull out your Andrace Forerunner for free with your Sterex, and then everybody's going to buff up and you'll be able to just hit home and kill your opponent. Um, really, there's not that much to it, right? Ramp into Amori, ramp into your Mutate with Sterex, and just Mutate, 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 get your Forerunner out, and slay your opponent. It's a, a really sick aggro deck. It does struggle against Field Wipes, but if you can get going again, um, you do stand a good chance because it's easy, once you do get started, to really explode with value uh, thanks to some of these effects of playing creatures straight from your library. So... This was Simic Umori. If you have any questions, be sure to reach out to uh, our community within the Discord. We're all playing these decks together. So we uh, are all working on different interactions and talking and sharing our experiences so you can learn a lot. I'm on Twitch every single morning, 6 a.m. PST. I love your company. And we have daily uploads on YouTube that you should also check out. Um, yeah, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so you're notified of all of our future uploads. Now let's get into today's gameplay footage. Two land, not the greatest. The Grazer's cool, and the Baby Godzilla's not the worst. I do love Gem Razor as well, right? We see a lot of artifacts and enchantments. It's nice to be able to deal with the enchantments, right? And the artifacts, just uh, taking them out right away. Mardu Knights or Rakdos Knights, we'll see. Um. We're just ramping into Amori, right? No attacks. We do have uh, defense available, which is nice. And we pull our Forerunner. So really, we want to ramp, ramp, ramp. We need to get our Baby Godzilla out. We need to get uh, our Umori out. And then hopefully our End Raise Forerunner. Ah, uh, land, that's so good. Baby Godzilla only works on creatures with Mutate, so it actually doesn't work with our End Race Forerunner on second thought, right, when we revisit that. So uh, keep that in mind, that we need to ramp organically with Umori and um, Migratory Great Horn, right? That's going to be a really good ramp engine for us to get uh, the runners out early. He does have removal, that makes us cry. Ooh, 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 ooh. Castle Garenberg gets us a little bit closer, right? One, two, three, four, five. Baby Godzilla is six, which means our Sterix is an option. And uh, I say let's go for it. Go, Arboreal Grazer. Evolve. As far as a discard goes, I am not 100% sure. I guess the land. Puts it over top. Alright, lotion goes in the basket. And there's our great horn. It's not really in um, the form we want it. We want it to be mutated, right? That's what's going to allow us to get those lands onto the field. But the 3 4 blockers, uh, well, that's body, right? So, 
we're bullying this knight's deck, right? We have Mardu Knights, which is typically pretty powerful. Um, but Stormfist Crusader can be uh, very good or very bad, kind of like Robert of the Rich, because you can really ramp your opponent up. Um, we could add six mana. Um, right? For four, one, two, three, four, plus itself is five. Um, so we'd have six, seven, and we need eight. Right? So let's just, uh, Sterics out so to say, right? Play some permanence. Grazer can go, let's be honest. Underneath, we keep it at 6-6. Six, six. And now we get to play some permanence. Get another Sterics, so that's great. And let's go in just a little bit deeper and just juice these lemons for all the value that we possibly can. And he's not into it. He uh, sees where this is ending. I get it, it's annoying. I'm going slow trying to explain things, but a win's a win's a win. The land's good, but I mean, I'd rather an Arboreal Grazer, right? The Forerunner is kind of a late game situation, so that can go. We're going to Grazer into our Castle of Mantris, giving us both types of land available for turn two. And then we're really relying on the draw, ramping into a Mori. That's our main goal. Go Forced, go Grazer. Go Castle Vantress. Alright. Lego. I say we just aggro right in. Grazer, evolve. Put it over top, turning it into a 4 4. Use Advanced Tickle. Oh no, like the Grazer went from having those silly fingers to big ol' Godzilla claws, right? Uh-oh. That's pretty annoying. Turn 2, 4-4 four, four with Reach and Trample? What? What's wrong with you? <sighs> He's gonna Teferi bounce the heck out of it. Which is actually fine because we have two lands in our hand, and we get both cards back from Teferi. So, mm, no harm, no foul. Because it allows us to do this. Right? Going absolutely wild as far as our mana goes for next turn. We have three, four, five, six available. So we're talking Sterix mutates if we want. And by golly, I think we just go. We just go. Teferi stays counting up. I don't care. We'll kill him with uh, whatever we pull next. We should kill him, but I can't do it. We need to keep our hexproof uh, on the sterics, right? Pays life. First shatter. We should have done it. We should have done it, kids. Right? It's hard. We don't always know what's uh, what's gonna happen like that, though. Mori will make uh, our other creatures cheaper, so let's get that out as a priority. And then we can go in with a secondary creature. Oh, Shatter of the Sky. We see it less in the meta. Uh, I guess it's still around. Who knows how many our opponent has because he's running Thornwood Falls, uh, which I absolutely love the art of. This looks a lot like my organic environment. Um, I could go take this picture. <laughs> um, but it's a budget card, right? And he's got two of them. Right? They're not rare lands, so how many fairies does he really have? How many shatters does he really have, right? Um, how many hydroid crises does he really have? Oh my lord. I think mutate is definitely uh, viable. Like, it's great. Uh, for example... <clears throat> right? We use our Castle Garenbrig. And... We kill Teferi for sure, and then we smash our opponent. We're gonna be one shy if we go all to the hen house. We can hit him for 16, plus he's got the block for two, so would only be 14 damage. He just takes it. That's delicious. 
It's all about just ramping into the Forerunner here. It's so powerful. ECD on our Forerunner. Whatever, bro. A Grazer is a good blocker, right? Sure. We're going to kill his ECD here with our uh, Gem Razor. Goes over top, making it a viable attacker. And again. Right to the hen house. This is Simic Mutate, right? Very powerful, I find. We do have a red source in here somewhere. Um, Apex of Wishes, but we just splash this and we use the Paradise Druid for it, right? So it's, I guess you could classify it as Team Air, but just with a single card um, with one mana source, it's not enough for me to justify calling it Team Air. I'd still say this is Simic. Obviously, we don't have any mountains. It's all islands and forests. Our opponent does not like the looks of this match. Right? I think destroying that ECD was the final... The final straw that broke the camel's back. All he needs is another Shatter, though, right? So, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Another Krasis. That's okay. It's tapping all of his mana. And by golly... Let's swing in. He has to block one of my 4-4s. Four yeah. Uh, it is what it is. Down to one. Enters tapped. His go. We do have Castle Vantress, which is nice. Taking the scry two. Grow Spiral looking for a shatter. It's a Dream Trawler. That's pretty interesting. I don't have enough uh, islands for my Castle Panther, so what am I even thinking of? That's brutal. We need two more islands for that. Oh, no. Into a Grazer. That doesn't help us very much. One card to rule them all, right, guys? We need uh, a forerunner. Ouch, we're so close to getting that win. It is what it is, though, right? We have no mana sinks and a ton of mana available. Let's try again, you guys. G G R I P. Our dream's taken right away from us. We have our Arboreal Grazer, which, I mean, if you've watched me play the Simic deck, is basically my requirement for opening hand. This did burn us last turn, though, I'm pretty sure. Um, but let's get in there. Playing our Castle Vantress with our Grazer is also one of the coolest things we can do. I believe we should continue to ramp as well. Take every opportunity we have. He missed his land drop, I believe. So that's enjoyable. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, mutate is six, so that won't work. Let's get Umori out, right? Continuing to ramp for ourselves. Creatures, please. And, um... I don't know what this does for us uh, at this point, so let's just play that. Right, the Paradise Druid has nothing mutated onto it, so it's not a high priority target. Umori uh, takes that place as the highest priority target on my board state, so uh, we're safe to tap the Druid, remove the Hexproof, just because he's not going to remove the Druid when we already have four land. He's going to deal with Umori. Migration path, that's fine.
Castle Garenbreak is always nice. Looking for more islands, though. And uh, this is a weird sitch, but let's just get right in there. A Boreal Grazer. I give you your mega evolution. Right, 6-6. Six, six. Let's get that Paradise Druid in play. And you are free to strike, my friends. Hitting for 10. That's half the HP zels. Alright, alright, you settle down, Gruda. What's he playing? He didn't get anything. He's got nothing but land. And he could play our Great Horn or our Parcel Beast, his choice. That's not good enough, though. Not good enough. I mean, don't get me wrong, it helps. Let's go ahead and uh, mutate our King of the Cosmos, putting it underneath. And it's it! We get the Gizzle! <laughs> uh, everybody strikes in. We should have played our... Uh, well, we can actually mutate it onto our Grazer. No! We could have hit even harder. <laughs> Alright, guys. We have our requirement of Royal Grazer. Been having pretty good luck today, I think. I don't want to blame it all on the Royal Grazer, but... It's just so good. Let's get that out. And we're playing our breeding pool, just avoiding paying life for it. Right, because we do have the forest, which allows castle to come in untapped. And then we have an island, which just comes in untapped. Just trying to ramp. We can play Omori next turn. I believe our opponent missed his land drop. Could that be true? Right, that's very important to hit your land drops, you guys. That's your first requirement. Before you have your best card, you need to make sure that you have the land to play it. Oh, he's going for it. So he's got a counter spell here, we know this. Right, we absolutely know this. Let's start it up nice and slow. Try to pull that counter spell out. All right, all right. There it is. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Not worried. Let's toss our breeding pool. Avoid paying life. And then we've got three. So, uh, yeah. Let's evolve our grazer. Turn him into an attack mode dude. Uh, yeah, let's toss the land for now. Goes over top, making him a 4-4. Four, four. We hit for nine. Mmm, delicious. He needs to shatter us here. No such luck. Okay, guys, two grazers. We're getting greedy, right? We've been having a really good luck with one grazer. This is nuts. We have to draw a secondary land, uh, or a land on our next turn, just to make the second worth it. But you just got to risk it for the biscuit. Um, you know, he makes a great mutate target as well. Oh, we get the land. We are cooking. Oh, my lord. Just throwing our hand on the field this game. <laughs> right? That's insane. We need a paradise druid. Right? That's the only way to get that out. Actually, no, we could mutate. Uh, it's a shared mana. So one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we need six, that'll do it. Let's evolve our Arboreal Grazer. Oh my lord. Discard our Parcel Beast, that sucks. He's a nice cheap mutate. Hopefully no counter here. Brazen Borrower, something like this. I mean, we pushed hard. He might have just broken his computer. Oh no, we're gonna break our computer. <laughs> uh, so sometimes you'll see how that doesn't pay off, right? Um, if it did, that would have been just incredibly oppressive out of the gate like that. Uh, we should have played our land again in case he had another quench. If he plays quench, we can just retire from this game right now. Yeah, oh wow. Hmm. 
Good for us. Uh, and because we're so sad about our play, uh, we miss our attack as well. He's giving us the good games. Let's roll, bro. I have the heart in the cards. How about this? Right, put a stop on our upkeep. We visualize our card and we draw. Yes! <laughs> Paradise Druid will win the game for us. <laughs> right, so I get a lot of flack on the channel, like, oh, that was a huge misplay, you're such a beginner, you shouldn't be doing this, right? Uh, and I just want to remind everybody, this is uh, primarily a channel for beginners, right? And if you're not losing or failing, you're not really learning. Um, so it's good to make mistakes. Like, that's a, a mindset that we need to get, oh, if I had the land... How do I not? Four, five, six, seven, or one land short. How hot would that be? Let's keep our druid um, safe, just in case we do draw a land. And play this right into one of his counter spells. <laughs> yeah, you gotta play the jank, right? It's all about jank for life. We should have kept our other grazer, because it could have been a 2-5. Okay, so this is great. I don't mind this either. Let's push Drew up. Probably should have pushed our Grazer, right? Because it's going to be a race. Oh, uh, we have to discard our Castle Fantress. That is sad. But we get the land. We get the land. We definitely should have put it on our Grazer. That's my bad. Fourteen. We're not gonna do fourteen damage. Is the thing though. Um, seven. And this is uh, if it doesn't get countered, right? We definitely do have lethal. If it's not countered, right? It sucks because it taps our druid. So it takes us further away. And it gets countered anyways. And then we just lose the game. Oh! Play your mana, you guys. When your opponent's playing quenches, you want to make sure you've got two mana available to pay for that. Or else you'll end up losing this embarrassing match just like me. I think I've pulled the grazer in every single opening hand today. Um, so it's been really great. We've been getting just blessed with the appropriate amount of land for the majority of our matches and uh, our ramp has been absolutely on point at this point i love for him to play an artifact or an enchantment <laughs> right a, a river It's not bad, right? It's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Let's just continue down that path. All of our creatures with mutate cost less with baby Godzilla. Umori makes all creatures cost less. So that's really cool. Secondary Robert is fine. We're surviving all that. And now, yeah, we're right into our Omori, just staying ahead of him. I think he missed his land drop, which is going to be unfortunate for him. He's seen two robbers in his opening hand. He's like, this is it. This is it. I can finally do it. Poor guy. All right. We don't have a grazer, you guys. I don't know if this is going to work out. Let's keep it and let's try anyways, right? We'll do our best. I 
I see Demir, and I think of Cry of the Carnarium. Ooh, I see Esper, and I I just think crying. Right, <laughs> that's what I want to do. He takes our King of the Cosmos. Good on him. He's going to come back for the Sterix. I guarantee it. Let's get Omori on the field ASAP. Again, we're allowed to tap our Druid for Omori because he is the higher priority target over the Druid. Ugh. Ugh. Let's just aggro. We don't care about the Druid right now. Baby Godzilla. We gotta kill Teferi. It's sad, but we gotta do it. I'm just playing it as a creature in case he has single target removal. Right, I wanna go wide. I really wanna force him into a Shatter of the Sky. Right? Drew just tapped. That's why I didn't want to mutate onto it. And it wouldn't have mattered. I'm sure he's got an answer for this as well. And that's going to be game. Esper doing Esper things. Is it was this? Like Esper humans or something? Well, I'm truly interested here. Let's grab a mutate, please. Oh... Deep breaths, you guys. Ouch. All right. Not all is lost. Ha! <laughs> ha! No counterspell? No counterspell? Mm, no counterspell. It'd be cool if he got plus two. Oh, he takes no damage because he's got the general. Dang it! We almost had him. We almost got him. Dang it. This is sad. We need a king of the cosmos. Uh, and some sort of like quadruple draw engine. Ah, this is sad. Let's do our best. Land, that's fine. Scry to the bottom, that's good. No attacks, we do have trample, and we're loving this land! Woohoo! Let's take our scry, just so we don't forget about it. Baby Godzilla's not going to win us the game here. We need a target to mutate onto. Right? We need hysterics, but the hysterics need something to mutate onto. That's what I'm talking about, boys. Give him flying. He's going over. Turning him into a 6-6. Six, six. Let's get another sick drop off the top. Oh, he kills himself. <gasps> we still get the play of the Great Horn. Wow. So he reset his board state, killing his own general and his own hero. Oh my lord, I do not mind that. Right, let's take back control with our many creatures. 
I love that Sterix. He's scrying. To the bottom as well. Super helpful. And then he rasts us. Nice. This guy's got all the answers. We gotta play it as the creature. It represents lethal damage to him. And can we still scry? We got enough mana for that? Yes. Let's get rid of both of these. Looking for another uh, end runner, right? Something like this. He gets another general. That's like a really good drop for him. He's forced into blocking. All right. We should be scrying on our upkeep, but... Who's got time for that? Let's just throw these cards out. Click the buttons as quickly as possible. Right? So, he's looking for another sweeper. Oh, an ECD on our Sterics, you dirty dog. And who's that gonna bring back, I wonder? We need a gem razor. We're mutating the druid, putting it over top, taking our scry and then drawing the card. I'm actually just progressing through damage. Um, I don't care what he does. Oh, we should have left Hexproof on. God damn it. That sucks. That sucks, that sucks, that sucks, that sucks. Yeah, we need to mutate it onto a creature. We blew that. Being greedy, you guys. We had lethal anyways. It is what it is. The haters are gonna love that, right? But like I always say, if you're not failing, you're not learning. So I do make these mistakes uh, for you guys, right? So you can learn from my terribleness and uh, really learn about these interactions for yourself at a high level. So we, we've got some stuff going on, right? He can do the exact same thing he did to us before. Which is pretty funny. And then bring them back with his ECD. We do get the uh, ability trigger though again. Which is funny. If he does it beforehand, so there's no target, we'll get the 6-6 six, six instead. Which I would take as well. That gives us another creature. Who does he take? Teferi? That's good. Too many misplays in this game, you guys. It is way too close. Alright, he bounces our Greathorn, which is actually really good. Is he gonna kill both of his heroes? Oh, no. So he's actually won right here because he can sacrifice these human tokens. Ouch. Oh my god, you guys. So, I mean, we've seen it right there. We had it in our grasp. And uh, we've absolutely lost it. Cry. Good game. I think he's got it, like he says. Just a bummer. He can bounce and then hit us for a huge amount there. So we see it. Let's go. Good game. And uh, a couple misplays there that cost us the game. But let's move on. All right, well, we've got our grazers this time, which I like, but not a lot of land, which could suck, but 
like I always do, risking it for the biscuit. 47% chance to draw land, so that's pretty good. Just crushing some breakfast before matches here, or in between matches. Loving it. I guess we could uh, have waited. We do draw land. That's hot. Grazer into our castle. Hopefully we pull another land off the top. 46% chance. He's paying life. It's another Esper deck. Can we um, redeem ourselves, do you think, you guys? He's not going to counter the Grazer. Oh, the C spends his mana. That's great. He should wait uh, until my end step. So I think he's holding something to mess with me. Because now I know he's not. And I could just kill him. Well, not kill him, but progress. Right, I could have a two drop there that did something. Maybe there's a counter spell here, let's see. Just trying to continue our ramp. If he kills the Grazer, the Great Horn still hits the field, but no mutate. And it's just a generous absorb. Main phase omen, interesting. One top, one bottom, takes the draw. Really? He's all about that graveyard control, I see. Hmm. I mean, if we see a Shatter, it's going to be sad. I don't care about the graveyard thing. I guess we should have killed the omen. I don't mind him paying a lot of mana though, is the thing. Oh, we should have saved it for ECD. That's what I wanted to do. God darn it. He's got nothing to bring back, though. A secondary version. Wow. This is getting personal. Betty wishes he would have saved that. But we would have been able to mutate onto it, so probably not, actually. Nothing to bring back, that's great. Right, if we can fizzle all four of his ECDs, I'd be pretty happy. 
If we can mutate next turn, we're laughing. Pays life for it. That's never a good sign. Is he pulling his ECD back? Oh, no way. The Dizance of the Mizance. Well, we're back where we were. Get that land, boy. He still has nothing to bring back, which is good. Even just the removal of it is really great, though. Another absorb, I'm sure. We've got to go for it, though. It hits. Ouchie mama. She bang, she bang. Oh baby, and she moves, she moves. <laughs> uh, sacking his omen for the scry too. Sure. I'm glad that we targeted the lantern with the... Um, Razor instead of the omen because if we targeted the omen and killed that when his dance hit, he would have been able to scry and draw. And it's better to have the lantern enter than the omen enter. So that actually was a blessing in disguise. Two to the bottom. He is in rough shape. Do we see a third ECT? Right? He's looking at his graveyard. I don't like that. Returning something. No way. We just are getting danced on all dizzy. Good game. Wow. <laughs> just when I thought we were surviving, you guys. Good game. Ouch. Deck looks alright. I mean, the hand looks alright. Paradise Druid on turn two. No Grazer, but it is what it is. Maybe we'll get lucky and draw it right here. No such luck. Trying to get our Amori out on turn three. That's the uh, biggest goal. Looks like we'll have no issues there. This is Esper Yorin. We cannot escape Esper, you guys. It's not nice. You guys have all the control in the world. Probably sitting on three shatters in hand already. We know he's going to counter it. Sucks. Let's not lose it. Let's lose our Great Horn instead. Interesting. I do not mind that. Taking our first island. No attacks. Keeping our Hexproof open. Into an... Omen of the Sea. Maybe we should have played our Umori. I don't know. It's hard to say. I just foresee counter spells, right? That's what's on my mind. The Dance of the Mance is also on my mind. I'm sure he's got an ECD straight chillin'. He goes underneath. Forcing him to use a shatter if he can find it. Hmm. 
No attacks. Uh, it is what it is. Let's try to pull out a counter. We do have a second Sterix. Goes over, turning it to 6-6, six, six, and let's start flooding the field. Then we can attack with some of these other things. Oh, so many land. Uh, one, two, three, four. I say let's just go for it. Right, just to flood the field a little bit more. Try to get all our value out while we can. Because if he wipes it, then we don't have a uh, a target to mutate onto. And this way we get to use his mana, right? He's got to do that now, just so we don't get it. Two to the bottom, that's nice. Oh man, that's so many cards. One, two, three, four. Um... I guess we just go Umori at this point, right? Drain our mana. Select creatures. No attacks still. Keeping Hexproof on our Sterix so it can't be touched. He has to uh, use a Field Wipe, right? Which if he had would make us cry, but that's kind of how these things go. Plays it to Fairy so he doesn't. Bouncing our Umori. Paying life for the land, interesting. Is he back into counter range, I wonder? Let's try to pull it out with our Omori. Right, that's something you definitely would want to counter at this point. Let's just keep flooding the field. We have 36 cards left. We get our King of the Cosmos here, that's really nice. Just a bunch more land. Oh, we got our Andre's Forerunner, that's game. Woo! -hoo! Everybody gets haste. Plus two, plus two. Oh no, Vigilance Trample, no haste, but nonetheless. GG's. All right, everybody. This was Simic Umori. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. I actually had a lot of fun playing this deck, and I love decks that just explode in value, like an absolute obnoxious amount of value, so much that you can mill yourself if you don't pay attention. Uh, again, this deck is 10 out of 10 for me, because not only is there an amazing free-to-play base version to start with, you can start upgrading and adding one rare at a time uh, from this build uh, into that build, right? And then work your way from that build into this build. So. That's what the Beginner's Handbook is about. Be sure to check that out. Link in the description below. Check out all of our brand new uh, Ikoria free-to-play decks with upgrade guides. Um, they're perfect, though. See? <laughs> I don't know, you guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you for continuing to spend your time and attention here with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're back tomorrow, 6 a.m. PST on Twitch, and then every single day at some point on YouTube. Be sure to hit the bell icon so you're notified, and then you don't even have to pay attention, right? Thanks for watching and we'll see you all tomorrow. Take care and have a great day.